Good morning and welcome back to Corna Tank Corna. Um, it's been a while since I've been uh, since I made one of these videos and I figure hey it's Father's Day why not? Um, <clears throat> I'm at home and I can actually you know spend a few minutes and you know maybe talk about my tanks a little bit. Um, so yeah so a lot has happened in my life since I've been uh, really active in uh, in on YouTube. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to find time to do these videos, but uh, somehow it always slips um, my daily tasks and uh, I just can't uh, get back into it, right? And then when I want to make a video, I'm, I just can't speak and uh, it makes it so much tougher. So, yeah. But uh, without further ado, I'm going to go and ahead and show you all my tanks and see what's happening. Um, this video is named the good, the bad and the ugly for a reason. Okay, So here's one of them. Um, this is one of my old tanks that, that I used to call the Golden Bee Shrimp Tank. And this one is um, tired. That's what I call it. Um, I'm having a little trouble focusing but uh, yeah this tank is got, has got tired. Um, and what that means is basically it's it's due for an overhaul. Uh, the substrate is uh, still buffering, but it's uh, it's crashed. Let's put it that way. I mean, the plants are doing good. The uh, neos are doing good in this tank, but the uh, caridinas weren't doing as good. Uh, right now, in this tank, I have some tangerine tigers, as you can see. I don't know if this is even in focus. Also some uh, low-grade uh, Bloody Marys. Bloody Marys are doing good. There's a whole bunch in here that they bred, um, that are breeding. Uh, you can see there's a baby right on the glass, I believe. And some adults, tangerine tiger. Uh, so basically I'm going to be tearing this tank apart. Um, I'm also downsizing as I find it takes me a lot of time to do some uh, water changes. So yeah, I'm just going to be keeping the, the shrimp rack and uh, and a few types of shrimps. Um, this is my favorite Bucephalandra, uh, this is the uh, Metallica. It's just beautiful colors and yeah, I love the way they look. As usually all my tanks are ran on uh, sponge filters. Sorry for the glare, it just, uh, it's there, I can't get rid of it. Uh, some floating plants here. It's, uh, usually I have two sponge filters in every tank, that, that sponge filter looks like it's detached from the glass. But yeah, so that's so much for this one. So I'm going to be tearing it apart. A lot of moss, and this is the uh, Minipilia. Yeah, okay, so let's go to the next one. This, um, this next one here is the was the Purell tank, pure redline tank. Um, same thing, it's been run for over almost two years, and uh, and it's got tired and now I gotta replace uh, or tear it apart. I don't think I'll put it back together. I'm just gonna tear it apart to move the plant somewhere else. Um, there's still a few babies in here I'm trying to fish out. But they're so small and they're great at hiding. So when I'm ready to tear it apart I'll just pull everything out and, and remove them and put them in a different tank. And that's the uh, willow moss. Tons of booze, moss ball had a baby, it's kind of cute. Yeah, so that's the story of this tank. So moving on to the next one. <clears throat> this, I'm just going to sit in front of it to prevent some glare. This here is my... Um, what is it called? Kapoma Blue Star Antlers. 
So I've been looking for these guys for a while and I got some. And they're breeding. I only managed to get one female, but now there seems to be a lot of them. A lot of babies. Back to the glare. There we go. It's not really focusing on the fish. Come on. So yeah, this fish is ran by uh, this fish. This tank is ran by uh, two sponge filters as well. There's one there and there's one in the back. If you can see, yeah. And uh, this used to be my old uh, crystal white. Uh, or a ghost bee um, shrimp tank. I got rid of them since then. So I don't have that shrimp anymore. So yeah, so much for this one. So I'll uh, move on to the next one. And here's the simple shrimp tank, which really never became a shrimp tank. Um, in the meantime, I acquired a whole bunch of um, Boost and um, and I this was my holding tank until I actually put him somewhere else in the different tank and I just never got around to do it as I got busy and uh, so yeah so right now it's still just holding the Boost Fondra and uh, I had a few blue eye Pascas in here and they had babies so I just kept the babies in here until they grow up and then once they grow up I'll probably tear this one apart as well. There's a few Amana shrimps in here. That one's buried. I am not gonna set up a saltwater tank to get these guys uh, to breed, that's for sure. Alright, so there's a whole bunch of different blue cephalandros in here. There's uh, That's the... Uh, uh, what is it called again? <clears throat> Cameron moss. And I'll show you in another tank how beautiful that the moss grows. Uh, this tank is quite fli uh, filthy and look at all that uh, air... Uh, what, is it, what do you call it? The air tubing in the back. Airline tubings. <laughs> it's just a nest. Alright, uh, moving on to the shrimp rack now, which is going to be a little more exciting, I guess. So we'll just start on the bottom here. This is the Bloody Mary tank. Um, this tank is usually doing good. I mean, it's a five gallon small tank. Um, the glass is a little dirty, but uh, he'll just throw some food I got ready here. Maybe they will gather. Just give it a second. I don't think they're that hungry, are they? They don't. They don't seem to be reacting to it at all. But there is about, uh, I'd say about, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 shrimps in here. This is, uh, this is one of the, I got, a, at one point I got about well, 10 moss balls and they're really, uh, really tiny and uh, this is the only one that actually grew to this gigantic size which is kind of strange and this tank doesn't really have that much light either it's just huge huge moss ball look at the size of that gigantic it's gonna take over this tank soon uh, there's a few th uh, shrimps eating, but they don't seem to be that ang uh, angry, <laughs> hungry. Um, yeah, which is a little wor worrisome. I'm gonna have to. Uh, this is due for a ch water change as well, and uh, just have to keep an eye on it, make sure that they're doing okay. But this is one of the other tanks that I'm thinking of uh, tearing apart. Not much in this tank, just a few boosts and uh, had a whole bunch of moss. I just pulled that out yesterday, just left a, bit, a little bit inside. This is run by one sponge filter in the back. Yeah, definitely not hungry. Hmm. It should be a flag right away. Okay, 
Moving on to the next one, this is just a, this used to be a tiger, tiger shrimp uh, tank, but now all I have in here is just a few uh, cherry shrimps. Used to be painted fire reds, but they're not, uh, I never called them, they're not really the greatest quality anymore. Same thing, this tank is gonna come apart soon. So there's a whole bunch of boosts in there. There's, there's a, some algae in there. Looks like the uh, what do you call that algae? It's not hair algae. Uh, looks like there is have a little bit of hair, hair algae in there, but that stuff. This is a different stuff here. It's like fuzz. Anyways, so this tank needs some big, uh, heavy cleaning, but. Uh, Again, I'm gonna be probably tearing this one apart as well. Just wanna keep a few tanks so I can actually maintain them. Okay, moving on to the next one here. This is my Blue Dream tank. Same thing, it's a five gallon tank. Dirty, dirty, as I neglected all of them. Uh, I was doing water changes probably every three weeks or so. So, yeah, you need to do more water changes. This is another moss ball. It's a little different. This moss ball seems like it's growing nice. It just seems to be uh, falling apart. Just kind of weird. I find that I have that algae. So I wonder if this is the same thing. So this uh, moss ball, and wherever I have the moss ball, I also have this type of algae growing which I believe could be the same thing which is interesting it's almost cool I guess huh all right there's a nice uh, trumpet snail I have trumpet snails in most of my tanks that, uh, so they can steer the substrate a bunch of boosts in this tank as well. Oops, the wrong way. <coughs> yeah, sorry for the dirty glass. Give these guys some food as well. I'll come back to see if they gathered. All right, so after the next tank, this tank here is the uh, it's the wild type. Um, crystal black shrimp so this guy, these guys are, are usually hungry because there's tons of them this is I keep saying this is one of my most stable tanks and this is the uh, that's a five gallon as well these are all same as you can tell um, but this tank is doing awesome all he has inside is just a whole bunch of moss and I think there's some boosts in there as well but you can't see the boosts from all the uh, moss right now there's tons of shrimps in here tons like I don't know if you can see but there's I don't want to say hundreds but there's well over a hundred shrimps in here and the uh, survival rate is incredible this tank has been set up this is the tank that I set up for the uh, the simple shrimp tank if you haven't seen that video go check it out um, a lot of these, like this tank in particular, has the uh, the substrate additives, and it definitely proves that the substrate additives help with the uh, shrimp tank sur survival, or you know, it'll actually la last you a long time. Um, so yeah, so it's it's really doing well. There's tons of shrimps in this tank. I've been asked to sell some, which I think is going to happen soon. Um, so if you're in Canada, because uh, I think I'll be shipping only within Cam Canada, um, you know, get hold of me and uh, we can arrange something possibly in the near future. Just still gonna wait for these guys to grow up a little. But there is tons of shrimps, tons of babies. There's a the interesting thing is there's a few uh, that turned out to be red. Now, I don't know if these shrimps, these these came from uh, Michael Nadal in Germany. 
and it's possible that he actually used some of these for uh, for super crystal reds so if you don't know how that works is actually they cross the um, the well I guess usually the lower grade crystal red shrimps and then uh, cross it to back to the wild form and the red coverage is gonna increase that way so a lot of people do that basically it's cheating into uh, quick super crystal reds and I think this is what happened because what are the chances that I'm gonna get a red shrimp and there's about three or four I've seen in here from one batch on, of this one particular shrimp the rest is fine yeah tons of shrimps I mean this is just what they're eating right now and they're always hungry because there's so many there's I'm assuming there's not much food in here in this tank well it's a pleasure watching these guys because there's so many and they're all doing great okay so this is a five gallon tank and yes if you set it up correctly you're gonna have success with smaller tanks uh, another thing that I noticed from the same batch there's a there's a shrimp is it, that you can see right somewhere in that corner it's like a, more, almost completely white oh there's one right there that looks like you know crown had almost crystal black which is kind of interesting because it came from the same batch so that tells me that these, these shrimps were actually used for other crossbreeding projects but uh, yeah I just love it I mean it's so many shrimps sorry for the glare I just can't get rid of it but um, they're doing awesome this substrate is ADA Amazonia aqua soil um, nothing in this tank other than I prepared the substrate pretty good like there's a lot of uh, additives you can check out the video I told you the name the uh, simple shrimp tank and uh, nothing really crazy there's there's a moss bowl in this corner you can't even see it it's covered from by moss and this leaf um, in the back there's a sponge filter and that's it there's not much to it really uh, a few adults they are constantly breeding tons of babies yeah on the top I even have uh, one light that I share for both of these this is the Phoenix Fugere uh, Planted Plus um, it's a 12 inch I believe or 10 and uh, and uh, sharing between these two tanks and everything's doing fine especially this side this tank is doing awesome all right so that's the uh, wild tap crystal black shrimp moving on to the next one I mentioned earlier that I was combining some pure red lines into one tank from the other uh, tank that uh, actually crashed so so actually I will go to it right now and that is right here so this tank here is uh, a few red lines now and it's um, uh, so much glare and it's uh, combined maybe I'll throw some food in just to see if it's if they I'm not sure if they're hungry to be honest just one second I'll set this down for a second So there's uh, quite a few around. It already has some of the furniture, as I call it, from the other tank, as I'm in the process of tearing it apart. This tank has the ADA aqua soil as well. And it has uh, just a Malaysian driftwood, I believe. 
Or is the manzanita? No, what is it called? Uh, it's not manzanita. It's the ah, I lost the name right now. Malaysian driftwood. I think that's what it's called. Ah, I don't know. Maybe it'll come back to me later. Oh. You'll probably recognize it. Usually it's darker on one side and light on the top side. I just, it, it, for some reason, I, the name just escaped me. In this tank, I have a little bit of the, what do you call this, the beard algae, as you can see here. So there you go, that's, um, and I gotta say the algae is not doing very well right now, um, but uh, it's still there, it's slowly dying. I had the lights down for a while and, uh, and increased the water flow, so that's usually helping. You know, the food fell in the back there. So that's that, just a whole bunch of uh, booze in there. That booze over there is, uh, you've probably seen it before, that's the Mini Catherine. Uh, most of the stuff in this tank is Mini Catherine. Some Thea right there and there. Mini Catherine and moss. I'm trying to get away from moss to be honest. It's just because it grows so much and it's really hard to trim. And once you trim it, it just uh, all the trimmings fall somewhere and then they just start growing and it's, it's harder to maintain. Um, Pelia or Sabasatang actually, um, that's what I like right now, and uh, Boos obviously, and uh, Mini Pelia, uh, and I like the Cameron Moss, seems to be uh, slower growing and it looks nice, so, so this is the PRL tank. They're active, I just don't get it why they don't want to, there's a few, they're not crazy about the food today. Well, it's the morning I fed him last night, so... Alright, so that's that. One, off to the next one. This one here is the... Uh, my Taiwan B project tank. Um, it was full of shrimps, but I uh, already removed all the ones that are uh, not Taiwan Bs. See if these guys are hungry. Again, I fed them all last night, uh, and it's only been like, what, 10 hours or so. They may not be hungry. But there's a few already coming, so hopefully they'll gather. Uh, let's talk about this tank a little bit. Um, as I mentioned, Mini Pelia. I'm becoming a huge fan now. There is a... <clears throat> at one point I got some booze from a friend, and it had some um, and he got that from uh, Aquabid and so there was some uh, see these little strings some kind of plant that just kind of grows like weed and I'm trying to get rid of it but it's it's just so painful like there's so many it keeps coming up and a little piece will just keep growing and it's actually entangled in this mini pelion and it just keeps coming up and I have to keep pulling it and pulling it and then little pieces you know, break off and uh, land somewhere else and, you know, it keeps growing and it's, you know, I hate it. Alright, so this tank is the Taiwan B slash Michelin tank. There's still a lot of, uh, you know, Michelin slash crystal red or black shrimps, which I can't tell if they're Michelin's or not, but I'm actually removing them and putting them in a different tank. Um, there's a nice little blue bolt. You know, uh, Thai, uh, what is it? The panda, again, two crystal reds. There's a wine red panda. Yeah, so there's a lot of baby. I mean, this is a tw uh, 20 gallon long tank, so there's a lot of places they can hide, and it's got a lot of uh, rocks and stuff. A few came already. This tank was 
um, or is still doing pretty good but uh, because of the amount of shrimps I had in here um, the food was like they would eat all the biofilm and so I, I noticed that uh, some of them started dying and so I had to up my uh, feeding still a lot of berries there's one there it is a slow process actually I mean it's 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 good that it's I can create my oops sorry Taiwan bee colony but it's it's just taking a long time um, you know out of every batch I would get maybe if I'm lucky five five uh, out of let's say you know 25 to 30 babies I would get maybe five Taiwan bees uh, and then not all of them will survive so you know you only have a few that survive and uh, so it's, it's taking a while to actually build up this colony but right now and then the some of the adults disappeared as well so there's still quite a few Taiwan bees but it's not going as fast as I'd like it to be this one is the Malaysian driftwood so the other one was something else I can't remember now Mopani that's what it is in the other thing that was Mopani driftwood or Mopani I don't know how you pronounce that but uh, yeah this is the Malaysian driftwood it's just a nice piece I like it, it sits on the base down and it just kinda goes in that arch just looks natural I have some moss in here again the moss is really good because I see a lot of shrimps in there and the babies in the moss but you know it's starting to you know spread and then you know it's just a lot of headache when you start to trim it I see a lot of babies but those are those all seem to be crystal reds there's some Taiwan bees on this side I'm really happy with this filter, this, um, what do you call it, the uh, HMF filter, porridge filter, um, it really works well. What I find is like I don't even have to clean it, uh, basically if there's too much dirt it'll actually fall in the back and settle on the bottom and then you just siphon that, so it's really neat. I do run another sponge filter in these just because of the water flow, because um, it's a long tank and they seem to be happier I run so same here see this moss just getting out of hand so I'm gonna have to trim it soon and you know one indication if your tank is doing good is uh, you look at uh, your moss is the moss growing then you know the tanks doing fine as well as the microfauna anyways a lot of leaf litter I believe in leaf litter and it's uh, the shrimps if, if the leaf and here's a good indicator if your leaf is decomposing that means your your environment tank environment is healthy if you just put a leaf in your tank and it doesn't do anything it just sits there and like never changes that means you have some issues with microfauna and most likely your shrimps will not do as well uh, and babies will not survive for sure so that's what I noticed um, yeah, so there's a lot of Taiwan bees in here. Not as many as I said I would like like there to be. Um, this is a nice baby here. He focuses almost a red ruby or so. Yeah, and that's what it's all about, right? It's just about uh, you know breeding something cool and. You know, it's easy to go and buy. I mean, yeah, it gets it to be expensive, but this is kind of interesting. And then every every batch of babies you're looking for, if there's any Taiwan bees, and it's kind of neat. There's a nice blue bolt here. Yeah. So that's that. And then uh, off to the next one. This is the. All right, and this is the tank where I. Where I put all the crystal red slash. Um, Mishlinks. Let's just take a look around. This is the uh, Cameroon moss, and I just wanted to show you how beautiful that grows. It's just like in a bowl and just kind of grows up. Really, really nice. Very comparable to the to the Minipelia, which is also very slow growing. 
and uh, it just looks cool. Obviously, shrimps love it. There's, they're all over it. This is becoming almost my favorite shrimp tank right now. I kind of, I like the uh, Taiwan Bee shrimp tank, but when there was a lot of shrimps in there, right? Right now, it's a little boring. But uh, most of those shrimps came into this tank, and uh, <laughs> it's just beautiful to watch because there's so many, and then yeah. And also, you don't know what you're gonna get. I'm thinking of throwing. I have a buried uh, ta tangerine tiger in that very first tank I showed you, so I'm thinking actually throwing it in here and you know let him breed, see what happens. But this is pretty cool. I'm gonna be selling a lot of these soon as well, especially Michelings. You know, there a lot of people who want them, and they're really hard to find. I, uh, there's a few suppliers that I know, and they're always sold out. They actually put people on the waiting list. There's a nice little panda I know there's a red ruby in here and those just came from two Michelings so so keep in mind that you don't necessarily have to have Taiwan bees to get Taiwan bees from uh, from uh, Michelings um, chances are you know you'll get a less percentage but chances are you will get one or two or none depending but uh, yeah there's a lot of uh, snow snow white uh, golden bees Oh, there's a nice red ruby right there. Not a... Oops, where is it now? I lost it. Oh, it's just facing me so I can't see it. Right there in the middle of the screen. Yeah, so there's a... Quite a few different ones. Mainly crystal black, crystal uh, reds and golden bees. And they have all a potential to be Michelin. I just can't tell because they're F2s. So I guess there is that risk when you buy Michelin's. Uh, if they're not F1, they may or may not be uh, Michelin's, right? And if they are, there is a greater percentage of getting Taiwan bees. So the best is if you keep crossing them back, then you know for sure they're actually. Um, Michelin's. Yeah, I just love watching this tank. I can just stare for it, uh, uh, stare at it for hours. I'm just gonna place the camera here for a second and throw some food in. And I can almost guarantee these guys always go for the. Where did I put that food? Oh, I put the camera right on the on it. So, <laughs> all right. So let's throw some food in and see what happens. Bullseye. Not much yet. Okay, I'll give it a few minutes or seconds, we'll see what happens. I know these guys are always hungry because there's so many. Can't be much biofilm left in here. Just gonna show you this Taiwan bee. There's another one. That one's just a baby. See it right in the middle? On the gravel moving towards that crystal red, uh, black shrimp. Oop, just jumped over it. Yeah, so that's what it's all about. I find these uh, Michelin's fascinating because they're really, really interesting. You never know what comes out, right? Could be golden bee, could be blue bolt, could be a crystal red, crystal black, or Taiwan bee, panda, red panda, red ruby, black king kong, whatever. That's why I find it really cool. In case you wonder, the food I'm actually feeding, and this is really good food. Um, it's the uh, uh, new, uh, what is it, the uh, shrimp dinner pearl from Glass Garden. It's really, really good food. I think they're getting a smell of it. More and more are coming. I can see them more active everywhere, just kind of moving. These guys are always hungry, and I think it's, as I mentioned, it's because of the quantity in the tank. The biofilm goes really low, and uh, and they need more food. Yeah, I can see them slowly moving. They're just kind of taking a walk 
towards the food. So this is the uh, goose right here, this is the uh, terrace layer cake, beautiful goose and it's just, uh, this one's a bigger size obviously and it's, it's growing beautifully. When I transferred it into the tank, um, I could see some melting but it just recovered so quick, I love it. This is the, uh, it's supposed to be Caternay Dark. Um, but it, you know, with boost you never know because a lot of them are uh, the name in whichever way they want. So you'll get one kind from one person, one name, and then uh, the next person will sell the same one with a different name. So, so you you be the judge of that, right? So you can see that there is a lot of similarities. But if you look at uh, on the internet and search for Caternay Dark. I couldn't find anything about it, so that tells me somebody just named it like that. This is another boost, I don't remember the name right now. That one over there is the infamous uh, Pinto Anubias Nana, I think that's what it's called. Uh, the, the big leaf, I'm gonna cut it off. It really doesn't live up to the to the reputation, it's just green. But you can see the one right next to it, it's really nice and white. So yeah, so if I get a, if I ever have a Pinto tank, I will, uh, I will put that in there because it suits, the name suits it, right? It's a Pinto. Okay, let's see what happened here with the food. There's a few gathering. For this tank, I usually put it on a few different spots, uh, the food, because they, you know, there's so many that they never get to the, the food. So you just want to make sure you spread it around so that everybody gets it. Yeah, so it doesn't seem like, I mean, they're obviously hungry, but it doesn't seem like they're going crazy as, as usual. I, uh, I fed them last night and I actually took a picture because... Uh, you can see that on my Instagram account. Yeah, and by the way, before I forget, don't forget to uh, check out my Instagram account. Actually, I'm actually posting pictures there daily. There's tons of cool pictures about shrimps. All right, so same thing here. We got sponge filter, we got uh, well, heater because of the winter it was it was pretty cold and uh, HMF filter I love it that filter is awesome um, Zoctic Oxidator um, at the moment uh, I have it in all my tanks but uh, they need to be refilled they're all empty I'm just lazy to do it because once I start water changes it because I don't have a setup um, to do quick easy water changes it takes me a long time it takes me a whole day just to change water ch uh, change the water because of the dripping process so and that's one of the reasons I want to you know cut back a little bit and uh, downsize and you know have less to worry about and maintain the ones that are doing really well right now Yep, and then uh, there's a couple of other tanks here. This one here totally needs to be torn apart. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, what do you call this? The uh, cyanobacteria, BGA, right? Blue bean algae. This tank's got a lot of. Uh, this is where the snowballs used to be. It's got a lot of looks like hair algae. So. I think the fish are gonna go in the main tank, that's my corner tank, which is not in the shrimp room. Um, so yeah, so I'm probably gonna tear those apart as well. Just downsizing, make it easier for myself. There's a few shrimp in this tank that are uh, gathered around the food, but nothing crazy, so I, they're not hungry at all. 
probably shouldn't have fed them because I just fed them last night and uh, they're not really hungry at all. One thing about shrimps is you do not want to overfeed them. I always usually underfeed them. That way they're always hungry and uh, you know they're happier and healthier. But make sure you feed them when they're when the uh, when there's a lot of them in the tank. The biofilm is not going to be as good and. Uh, and these guys need some you know additional food so keep that in mind all right so i think this is where i'll end the video so i think i talked enough for this time and i think uh, i'm gonna have an unboxing video coming up soon so we'll see what that is all about so make sure to tune in for that when it comes out i'm hoping within uh, probably the next week so we'll see what that is what's happening with that unboxing all right so happy shrimping and see you next time